Hello, discrete math fans. Let's talk about summation notation. We'll often want to add up terms of a sequence. You do this all the time in calculus too, where you do infinite series, so you have to add things up. Let's say we have a finite sequence, a sub m, a sub m plus 1, all the way up to a sub n, and we want to add up these numbers. So the naive notation is just to write out what you ordinarily would, just a sub m plus a sub m plus 1 plus all the way up to a sub n. Now there's a more compact way of writing this. So the more compact form looks like this. So actually the compact form is on the left side of this equation. It looks like this. So we use the Greek letter sigma to denote sum. You've done all this sort of stuff before. The right side is just the naive way of writing things out. So the left side is what we would call summation form, and the right side is the expanded form. We'll call k the index, m is the lower limit, and n is the upper limit. So as an example, let's take this sum and write it using summation notation. So that's 1 over n plus 2 over n plus 1 plus 3 over n plus 2, and so on, up to n plus 1 over 2n. Now there's lots of different ways of doing this depending on how you index it. One way of doing it is to see that the general term can be written as k plus 1 over n plus k, where the integers k go from 0 to n. Now the way you can see this is to take this expression, this k plus 1 over n plus k, and start substituting values of k in there, starting at 0 and going up to n. So for instance, this term here you'll get when k is equal to 0. This term here when k is equal to 1. This term here when k equals 2, and so on. The last term coming when k is equal to n. So that means we can write it more compactly, so this expanded form of the sum can be written now using the summation form. It'll look like this. Since we know what the general term looks like, that's what we're adding, and then the sigma tells us where to start and stop the k. Okay, that's all for now.